Hi and welcome to another video by Jim the Car Guy. Today we have a 2012, it's a Hyundai Santa Fe with a 3.5 liter engine. The complaint we have is that there's a, there's a buzzing noise underneath the hood. Um, now the buzzing noise is, is noisy now when it's idling, but when you're driving it's considerably louder. So I'm going to show you how to, uh, to pinpoint where the noise is coming from and how to go about correcting it. Um, very common in these cars that the, the, the tensioner or the idler pulley, even possibly an alternator, it, it could be. So uh, let's pinpoint where it is and we'll continue. So let's, I'm going to lift this up. I'm going to take the right front wheel off. I'm going to remove that splash guard on the side. I'm going to try to pinpoint where it's coming from. So, uh, all right, let me get set up and uh, we'll continue. I don't know if you can hear that. But as you can see down there, you have the alternator, your air conditioner, an idler pulley, your tensioner. You know, so you're, you're wondering how the heck do you pinpoint where that noise is coming from. Um, at idle, it sounds a little loud, but when you're driving, it's considerably louder. So, uh, all right, let me uh, show you how to pinpoint where the noise is, and um, we'll get a couple of tools, and we're going to continue. Okay, now we got the car up on up in, on the left. I took off the right <clears throat> the right side wheel, as you can tell, and there's a cover that was right inside here. I took that off as well. Now. You're going to be very careful because you can hear the engine is running, you can see the belts are turning, and you're trying to pinpoint where the noise is coming from. Now, if, you, if you're listening here carefully, you can hear it coming from in this area up in here someplace, but you can't tell for sure where it is. So what we're going to do is we're going to get in here with a uh, with the stethoscope, and we're going to try to pinpoint where it is. Now, if you don't have a stethoscope, I'm going to show you how you can make this little homemade gizmo to tell for yourself. But what I'm going to do first, before I do anything any further, we're going to shut this car off and that cap right there, we're going to take these caps off so we can get in and listen to the bearing, both on the tensioner and on the idler pulley, which is up inside there. So uh, let me shut this off for a minute, we're going to take those covers off, and uh, once I get it back up on the lift with those covers off, we'll continue. Okay, now as you can see, I took that cover off right up inside here. That cover is off. We're going to also remove this cover right here. And the way you do it is you just get underneath here with a little hook like this. And you just catch the, the bottom of it. There's a tiny little hole in it. And we just pull it out like that. So now we can actually see where the bearing is located right inside there. And the other bearing is up inside right up in there. So. All right, we're going to start this up, and uh, then we'll come right back when it when it's running. Okay, so now that we have it running here, we can try to pinpoint which pulley is making the noise. Now, if you have a stethoscope, that's great. If you don't have a stethoscope, what you can do is take yourself a very long screwdriver like this, and you can put it into the center right there on the bearing and then you put this end of it to your earlobe and you listen. I can hear a little bit of rumbling inside there but nothing significant. And we're going to get into that other one up in the top right there. And you want to be real careful because everything is rotating. You want to put it just on the bolt, right? I can feel a rumble in this one in the screwdriver already. So we just put it on there just like that, and then you put this up against the ear, and you listen to it. Okay. I don't know if you can hear this, but let me see if you can hear the vibration. I don't know if you can hear that, but that one there has actually got a vibrating noise. Let me listen one more time. Absolutely, that's the bearing that's making noise there. Let's see this one one more time here. All right, that's a little bit of noise. So I'm going to leave it up to the customer exactly what they want to do. I'm going to recommend that they change the uh, idler pulley, which is right there. And then we're going to see if they want to change the tensioner, which is here. But like I said, we'll leave it up to them. All right, so uh, let me shut this off, talk to the customer, and then we'll come right back. I just want to point this out now. Now, if by chance 
you don't have the stethoscope, you can use a long screwdriver like this. Um, I've also, um, when I, you know what, let me grab one more thing I want to show you. Hang on. Right. Okay. This is, you're looking at that brake line there and you're probably thinking, what the heck is this old guy showing us? But I want to explain to you. Sometimes you'll have a noise and the noise is so far down, you can't pinpoint where it's coming from. So what I do is I stick a brake, ho uh, brake line on a rubber hose like this and then you listen to the end of the rubber hose and you can hear it as clear as day where it's coming from. Um, I didn't use it on this one, I used a screwdriver because I can reach it, but if it's in a real bad location, you can't get your hands in, you don't have a real long screwdriver, you always have the option of using a brake hose and a piece of rubber hosing, and you'll be able to actually hear it. This one transmits the vibration through it, so you can actually hear it and feel it. This one, you may get the vibration through it, but you're more so going to hear the sound coming through it because the brake hose is ho obviously it's hollow. So, all right, let me uh, make a phone call and uh, we'll talk to the customer and see what they want to do. All right, let's make a phone call, see what the customer wants to do. I did get a price on the parts already. They're not cheap. The tensioner is actually kind of expensive, so I'm going to leave it up to the customer what they want to go ahead and do. If it was my car, I would change the fan belt, I would change the idler pulley, and I would change the tensioner all in one assembly. Somebody's coming in, be right back. Okay, call the customer and see what they want to do. John, how you doing? It's Jim. Hey, good, good. Um, I got the car, truck up on the lift, and um, I took the right side wheel off, took the cover off the side to get in there to try to find out where that noise is coming from. And it appears to be coming from a, a, an idler pulley inside there, but there's also a little bit of noise coming from the tensioner, too. And I wasn't sure if you wanted to go ahead and replace everything while I'm in there, or if you just want to do the one piece, and we'll just see how it goes. If it was my car, I would change everything. Okay. Yeah, yeah, because uh, what's happening is the, the fan belt, we're going to change the belt because it's off. The, we may as well put the new belt on too because there's no extra labor. It's off anyway. And as far as the tensioner and the idler, i got to take one off to get to the other anyway. So it would just be the cost of the parts. So it's, it's logical to go ahead and change everything in one shot. Okay. All right. Very good. I'm going to order the parts up now. I'll get started on it, and I'll uh, call you by the end of the day. Okay. All right, John. All right. Thank you. Good call because if it was my car, as you heard me tell them, I would change the belt, the tensioner, and the idler pulley all in one shot. You're in there once, do it once, and be done with it. The worst thing is if I put the tensioner, if I do not put the tensioner on there and there's a little bit of noise in there also, you're going to wind up pulling the job apart a second time. I want to do it once out the door and that's it. So, uh, all right, let me order the parts for it and then I'm going to show you how to change the tensioner, uh, the belt, and the idler pulley. Very easy on this one here because you got everything is from the bottom. So, all right, let me order the part and we're going to go outside and continue. So. Okay, here's an example of what you're going to need to get the job done. It's fairly easy. You're going to need a set of metric sockets. You're going to need a set of uh, Torx bits. Uh, you're going to need a ratchet, maybe a swivel head ratchet. But the longer the extension, the better you are. All right, so what we're going to do now is we're going to. Oh, let me show Okay, make sure before you take this fan belt off, make sure you, before you take the belt off that you may have a, uh, a picture of what this is going to look like when you put it back together. Uh, a lot of times you, you think you're going to be able to remember it and you're not going to be able to. So take a picture with your phone of the belts or if you don't have a, a phone or whatever, just draw a little schematic out so you'll understand how the belt goes back on. All right, the way we're going to loosen the tensioner is we're going to go on here with a 19 millimeter socket. We're going to push this down and we're going to slide that belt off right there. All right, and once we have the belt off, then we're going to go up top here and we're going to take out that bolt there. It looks like it's probably a 12 or a 13 millimeter and we're going to remove that idler pulley and replace it with the new. To change the tensioner, we're going to loosen up that bolt right there and then we're going to remove that little bolt up in there. I don't know if you can see it, it's probably a 13 millimeter. I'll get in there with a better light so you'll see, but uh, that's pretty much it. All right, so let me grab some tools and uh, 
let's get started. So you just get on here with your, your 19 millimeter socket and we're just going to pry down on that a little bit just to get the belt so we could take it off and then we'll release it again. You just with this one here you don't kill yourself you just hold constant pressure on it and then what happens is that little hydraulic cylinder back in there slowly collapses down. We'll take this off and then we'll just let it back up. Okay. Alright, so our belt is now off. We're going to take the belt out. Now we did write it down so we know how it goes back on. So we're just going to remove the belt to give us a little more room to work here. Now you can spin the pulleys <clears throat> to try to see if you can possibly hear any noise while it's disconnected here. How you like that friggin' music out there, huh? All right, here we go. You really can't hear anything without the belt on it, but I know that that was making noise. So we're going to get on here with a uh, with a socket or a wrench, and we're going to remove that. I'm bumping the camera on you. Okay. Hopefully you can see that I didn't bang you out of the way. And then we'll pull this down and we'll take that bolt out. Now that we have it loose, we'll take it out by hand. take that tensioner off now. And the way we take that tensioner out is we're going to take that bolt out right here first. Okay. millimeter just so you know. Tough to work around the camera. Back, there's a little tiny um, like a pin that holds this into the uh, into the tensioner here so we're just going to work this back and forth Bolt that right up inside there. And that's going to be a 12 millimeter.
take our tensioner out. Here's your tensioner here. So now we're just going to wait for our new tensioner to come in and um, we'll have to see. We're probably going to have to switch over this um, hydraulic piece right here, but we're going to need the Torx to do that in the back. So we'll see how the new tensioner comes first and then we'll go from there. But I don't know if you can hear that. Not that loud, but you can hear a little bit. This one is the one that was actually really bad. Hopefully you can hear that. All right, let me grab the new stuff, and uh, once we get the new stuff, let me grab the new uh, let me grab the new parts as soon as they get here, and then we'll put this job back together, and uh, hopefully nice and quiet, and out the door. All right, so uh, we'll come right back as soon as the parts get here. Okay, these are the replacement um, uh, pulley, uh, idler pulley, as well as the tensioner assembly. As you can see, it does come as a complete assembly with the new hydraulic piston on there. I wasn't sure if that was going to come like that, but it does, which makes it a little bit easier for you. Now, make sure that your pulley is the correct pulley. Match them up just to make sure that everything is perfect, because you'll be surprised how many times you get these and they're the wrong ones. All right, that looks perfect, so we're good there. And as you can see, this one here matches up perfectly also. So, all right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the, uh, the idler pulley back on and then we'll put our tensioner on. So let's get set up and continue. Okay. Now we just catch this back in there. Now, there is torque specs for this uh, pulley. I didn't look it up yet, so I'm just going to get everything caught in here and tighten it up, and then we'll go and look up the specs and we'll tighten it to whatever the specs call for. We're going to screw it in as far as you can by hand. Okay, now we just tighten up that, that bolt. Now, like I said, we're just going to snug this in there for now. And then we'll come back and we'll torque it to whatever the specs are. Okay. Now, we're going to catch our, our bolt in here first on the upper part of this um, tensioner. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing in there. Let's get a light. All right, that's better. All right, remember, everything is done by hand. Nothing is done with a wrench or a socket or anything like that until after we have everything caught. Tighten everything up. Okay, and we'll just snug that in there. Okay, like I said, this is going to be torqued in later on, but we're just catching it for now. All right, we're going to tighten up this bolt here. Okay, so now our tensioner is tight. Our tensioner is caught here and tightened up. The uh, top of the tensioner here is caught. Our idler pulley is tightened up. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, come in here, we're going to put our belt in, and the last thing we're going to do is we're going to pry down on this and reattach our belt. So, uh, all right, let me uh, grab the new belt, and we're going to continue. Okay, now, 
that we have everything back together. We have all the belts are back in their locations where they were supposed to be. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to pry down on this tensioner right here and we're going to slide the belt on over here. So we're going to do that and uh, I'll try to do it with you guys watching. Let's see what happens. Okay. Make sure your belt is in its location. Now, even if you make a mistake, don't worry about it. We're not starting the vehicle up yet. We're just putting the belt where it belongs. And now we're going to put the belt up like this. And now you'll come onto here and you're going to pry. Remember, you're not going to kill yourself. You're just going to hold a little bit of pressure on it. Okay. Now it is a pain in the rear end as you can see. Okay. So now that we have our belt on the tensioner here, we have it on the pulley, we're going to go around and check each one of the, the uh, driven items just to make sure that the belt is on as it's supposed to be. Now the top is a little bit rough because you can't even see it up there, but I can feel that the belt is off on top. So we're going to come down here. And we're going to pry on that, and we're going to adjust it up on top. The key is you want to do this all before you start, because once you start it, you're going to kill your belt. Okay. I don't know if you heard that snap down. But it went in place. So again, we're just going to take a look just to make sure. And I can see up top is on. I can see over here is on. It's on there and there and there. And how about our alternator? Okay, all right, that's it. Now, if we did our job correctly, we should start this up. And it should be a very quiet now. Now, I just want to point this out. I didn't put these covers on yet, but I will put those on shortly. All right, we're going to start it first. There you go. You can hear it's nice and quiet now. All right, so again, make sure your belt is on correctly. Nothing is off. It's all in place. Do, don't put your fingers in there, obviously, because you'll lose them. And uh, all right, we're going to shut it off now. We're going to pop these covers back on, and we're going to wrap this job up. So let me shut it off, and we'll come right back. Now. Okay. All right, so now we are going to torque these back down here. I have to go look up the torque specs now. And once I get the torque specs, we'll, uh, we'll torque these and then we'll come right back. Okay, now that everything is torqued in place, we're going to take our covers and we're going to put them back on. As much as you don't want to, as much as you want to just throw these away, don't do it. It keeps all the road debris from getting inside here, so make sure you put it back on. Okay, that's it. We're all set. Now, like I said, you don't have to change the tensioner. If you didn't want to, this customer decided to because this was actually fairly noisy, not as noisy as this one. The, uh, the uh, idler pulley was actually the, uh, the whole time that was the problem. Sorry about that. Somebody just pulled in with their exhaust system dragging outside. All right. Um, that's it. We're all set. So if you have any questions or comments, you want to talk to me about anything, send me an email. I'd be more than happy to talk to anybody about anything. And if you run into a problem and you need some advice, of course, you know, just let me know. All right. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you on the next one.